What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is the locker room episode one. This is the GBA week one pre-game team analysis video for you guys, where I'm going to talk about the team I opted to bring in the video that you're going to see following this one, which will be my matchup uh, against each week's opponent. This week, my opponent is Hank the Pidgey. Uh, he runs the Winnipeg Aqua Jets, and he's got a pretty menacing team, which I will read to you guys right now. He has Infernape, Excadrill, Mega Pinsir, Tornadus T, Amoongus, Alomomola, Miss Magius, Latias, Gardevoir, Sharpedo, and Magneton on his team. So um, I did a very thorough analysis of his Pokemon, the likely moves that they can bring, and then I thought uh, about scenarios and matchups that I'm hoping to see and how I can possibly turn this game in my favor. Upon initial analysis, some of his Pokemon match up very well against mine, but I'm also opting to bring Pokemon that match up very well against his. And my real goal here is to put in a good show, show people that my team is as good as I see it in my eyes, and better than everybody else sees it in their eyes. That's my real goal here. Uh, it's gonna be a tough matchup. Hank is a very talented battler. He's got experience in this format, and he's got a very strong team, very hyper offensive team. Um, but I've got a few tricks up my sleeve, and I'm going to talk to you guys about that now. Um, I also wanted to discuss, before I get into the team, so like full team analysis, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the GBA WordPress site, but we have a website for the GBA, and we have writers who do analyses on that site. So we had someone who did a prediction of this week's matchups, and I was very upset. It legitimately upset me when I read the one about my team. I don't know who this writer is, but he's not very talented. I in doing his reading I found at least four grammatical errors or spelling errors or as such so first of all he's not a very good writer second of all it was incredibly rude what he wrote about me in, in the team analysis uh, I encourage you guys to go check it out and give an unbiased opinion on it I don't mind that people think I'm gonna lose guys spoiler alert he thinks I'm gonna lose pretty horribly and that's fine I don't mind that people think I'm gonna lose I can't win every match uh, unless by some miracle you do but this this is the nature of the game that some teams have good matchups but this guy was he just really rude and in, in saying that like he doesn't see that there's any possible way for me to win this matchup unless I pull something out of my ass excuse me anyone can win any match with a couple of well positioned and well timed boosting moves you can sweep entire teams that is the nature and he thinks that the only way I'm going to break through the Alamomola Amoongus core is with a Mesprit. Well, here's a little fun fact, guys. I've done calcs running standard EVIV sets, to, to be fair. But considering every possible hardest-hitting move that any of Hank's Pokemon have against any of my Pokemon, and Mesprit matches up against his team horribly. So whoever this analyst is has not done their homework and thinks that I apparently only have three Pokemon on my team, Swampert, Politoed, and Mesprit, because clearly he hasn't seen that I have an Electivire, a Moltres, a Gyarados, and a Gudra, all of which do tons of work against Hank's team. Absolutely tons. So that's my rant out of the way. I'm really upset about that writer. I hope I never see his trashy writings on that site ever again. And He's got me really upset. If you're gonna... Here's the thing, guys. If you're gonna... If you're going to badmouth a team or predict a matchup going in someone's favor, you don't need to be rude about it. You can just say, hey, look, I've seen Hank's team. It looks like it matches up really well against Geo's team. Let's silence my phone so that doesn't happen again. Um, you can write it like that and not put a person on the defensive. But I'm offended, I'm hurt, and it's this is supposed to be all fun and games. But when someone writes really offensive things like that to, directed towards me, I'm just not, I'm not having it. So I'm not pleased with that guy at all. Maybe I'll make my voice heard in the GBA chat about that eventually. But let's go over my team, guys. First thing you guys are noticing, no Politoed. Where is he, you ask? Well, guys, I told you from day one, this is not exclusively a rain team, and now is the perfect time to not be bringing a rain team. Let's discuss a few things here. Um, and it's largely my prediction of who he's going to bring. Um, I don't have it solidified down to the six exactly, but I know the six Pokemon that I think he might think are going to be the most threatening to me based on what he thinks I'm bringing. And I think he's going to bring Infernape, Amoongus, Alamomola, Latias, Megapinsir, and Magneton. 
The Magneton one can be switched. He might bring Excadrill if he wants a spinner instead of a defogger. Latias is likely his bulky defogger if I'm if I'm gonna have to make a prediction, that's what I think it is. He might also opt to not bring Infernape and bring Excadrill instead as his rocker. Typically he's gonna bring, uh, I see him bringing Infernape, I see him leading with Infernape, which is a big part of my strategy, which I'll go into in a second. Magneton might not be coming though. He might bring Gardevoir, Gardevoir matches up pretty well. He might bring Sharpedo if he thinks I'm bringing the rain. And I think he thinks I'm bringing the rain. I think everybody thinks I'm gonna be bringing the rain. Here's why I'm not. Uh, the benefits of his team, to me having uh, a rain team are too great. They're too much. I don't need Swampert to be this blazing fast sweeper with uh, under the rain. Um, I don't need that degree of prediction that it gives him. And uh, as far as the support Pokemon is concerned, I would rather bring Scallopede, which I have. So between the amount of strength that it gives Sharpedo, between the 100% accuracy it gives Tornadus T's Hurricanes, if he's going to bring Tornadus T, um, it's possible that he won't. And actually, I don't have it in my prediction of six, but it's something that he might bring. Uh, I don't see him bringing Miss Magius because she doesn't hit hard enough, even with her very deep move pool. She doesn't hit hard enough to really one-shot a lot of my Pokemon. And she just in general doesn't match up a whole all that well to a lot of the other ones. So uh, here's the Pokemon I'm bringing, or here's the seven Pokemon I've considered. You also notice there's seven Pokemon here. I'll go into why that's the case. We have Mega Swampert. Um, you know what, I'll, let me pull up this screen so you guys can get a, a nice view. We've got Uncle Buck, the Mega Swampert. We've got Go Bunny Sore, the Gudra. We've got Fox, the Moltres. We've got GLaDOS, the Gyarados. We've got Pete, the Scolopede. Scolopede. We've got Viral, the Electrovire. And we've got a Korean, <laughs> a Korean Ditto. <laughs> Not even gonna try. Um, and we have my HM slave over here, Mr. Mew. <laughs> um, okay, so here's the thing. These Pokemon are massive physical threats. Any one of them would benefit incredibly well from a Scallopede pass, and they cover each other's weaknesses incredibly well. So if uh, I predict that I'm up against someone who's likely carrying a Grass-type coverage for Mega Swampert, and I predict tons of Pokémon are going to be doing that. Infernape with Grass Knot, um, I think that Amoongus obviously is going to carry probably Giga Drain or Energy Ball or something like that. Alamomola maybe with an HP Grass. Uh, Latias with Energy Ball. Gardevoir with Energy Ball. Magneton with maybe HP Grass. But another thing to consider is that if he's bringing Magneton, and here's a huge thing about my team building uh, mentality, is there can only be one type of hidden power on these guys. And he has to predict whether or not he's going to bring it because he knows I have two steel types in the ring, whether he's bringing HP fire for them. You'll notice I didn't bring a single steel type. So the thing that everyone's predicting my team is so weak about, oh, you know, other people can take advantage of the rain, and it doesn't matter that he's got the rain because he's got two steel types, both of which can get trapped and killed by HP fire. Well, analysis, seizes, <laughs> analysts, with your analyses, I didn't bring any of those things, and my team is still scary, and I'll show you why. Um, if you're going to hit this guy with an HP grass, Gudra's going to take that and get a boost off of it, or... Gyarados is going to take that neutral, and we know that you won't be carrying Hidden Power Electric. Only a few of these Pokemon can be carrying Thunderbolt to really match up well against Gyarados. Uh, Infernape can carry Thunderbolt or Thunder Punch based on whether he's a naive mixed, or adamant, or modest, or timid, or jolly set. Uh, I've factored all of those things into play, which is why even though Gyarados seems like it'd be a great matchup, you know, water flying versus fire fighting, uh, I've got to be really careful with bringing Gyarados in against an Infernape. Um, we know that uh, Excadrill doesn't carry anything other than Rock Slide to hit me super effective. Mega Pinsir, nothing but Stone Edge. And after Intimidate, neither of those one hit KO. Uh, Tornadus T can carry a Hurricane, which is going to hit me pretty hard. Uh, Amoongus can't really hit me very hard with anything. Clear Smog, probably the best move unless he toxics me or tries to put me to sleep. Alamomola, HP Electric is only going to hit for 31. 
Miss Magius, Shadow Ball's her strongest combo. Uh, Latias does carry Thunderbolt. Gardevoir can carry Thunderbolt. A Magneton, of course, carries Thunderbolt. So you'll see that it's very predictable whether or not someone has something against my Gyarados. So I'll know whether or not I can switch in with him against him. So these two cover each other's weaknesses pretty well. Electivire is here because if a uh, ground-type attack is going to come his way, Gyarados can cover it. If an electric-type attack is coming at Gyarados, Electivire can cover it. If a uh, rock type attack is coming at Gyarados, Swampert can cover it. So I can predict with this who to pass my speed boosts and my attack boosts to. And any of these Pokemon would greatly appreciate even just one speed boost. Doesn't even need to be a Swords Dance. So that's why I opted to bring the Pokemon that I've opted to bring here on the physical side. Gudra is there because he's a very good coverage Pokemon. He walls a lot of the Pokemon. He can switch in and take very little damage from the likes of Pokemon like Tornadus T, Amoongus, Alomomola. Another really good thing about him is that uh, when it comes to his matchups, he can eat up spores if Alomomola is or if Amoongus is carrying it. Um, I also have another trick up my sleeve for that one. But uh, I've opted to bring on Gudra on Bunny Sore. Um, I am bringing. Uh, Dragon Pulse, Flamethrower, Sludge Bomb, and Thunderbolt. Uh, a lot of people see Ice Beam. I didn't need it. I can hit every single one of his Pokemon super effective with that coverage of moves, except, I think, Miss Magius. And... Yeah. Yeah, except Miss Magius. I can I have a super effective attack for every single Pokemon, Pokemon on his team. So that's why I opted to bring Bunny Sore. Fox, uh, a lot of people might not have predicted me bringing. Here's why I'm bringing him. Fire Blast, Air Slash, U-Turn, and Will-O-Wisp, and he's Choice Scarfed. There's a very specific reason I'm bringing Fox, and that is that I predict he's going to lead with Infernape. I predict he's going to carry Rock Slide, Stone Edge, or Thunder Punch, and think he can one-hit KO me with it. Here's the math that I've done. If, for, uh, for a long time, the set I was going to bring for Moltres was 92 HP, 172 defense, 244 speed, timid, choice scarf. Which does one very specific thing. Uh, two very specific things. One, it outspeeds uh, Jolly Excadrill by one point uh, at level 50 while we're, if we're both choice scarfed. Uh, another thing is that with that exact HP distribution, if he is a modest HP rock or an adamant rock slide it survives Infernape's attacks. It will survive 100% of the time. It's a 99.6% of my health at maximum. It will never kill. Even at max rolls, the Infernape won't kill me with either of those moves. The reason I didn't bring it is because that is factoring only that Infernape does not have any attack boosting items and outspeeds me with my Choice Scarf, which would mean he's Choice Scarf. But if he's Choice Scarf, I don't need to survive one of his attacks. I can go down, I know what attack he opted to kill me with, if it's Hidden Power, Rock, or Rock Slide, I can come in with Swampert and start setting up and really do some numbers on his team. So I opted eventually to just go with a very standard EV spread because I think it's going to do everything I need it to do with Fox. Fire Blast uh, is great for a lot of his team, takes out a lot of people. Uh, it puts real big pressure on Amoongus, and Alamomola doesn't like Air Slashes. I can get a really quick U-turn off and, and select moves that way. Fox is going to be my lead. He's going to be my anti-Infernape lead. If he opts to lead with Infernape, and he opts to stay in with Infernape, he's going to be in a world of hurt. And I think he will opt to lead with Infernape, and I don't think he's going to be Choice Scarfed. So that said, that's my reasoning for Fox. He's a very strong special attacker. Um... His goal is largely going to be to punish anyone on his team who thinks they have Stealth Rocks and have the opportunity to set them up. Main Pokemon that looks uh, to me like they're going to be able to do that are just Excadrill and Infernape. I don't see him packing rocks on anyone else. Not that he couldn't. I think... Um, no, actually, I think that is it. I think those are the only two rockers he has on his team. And I can one-hit KO both of those Pokemon... Uh, Infernape gets one hit KO'd with Air Slash 100% um, of the time, and Excadrill gets one hit KO'd with, um, with Fire Blast. So, obviously both those moves are not 100% accurate, and that is something that's a little bit unfortunate for me, but it's something that's, you know, you gotta live with when making these calculations. I thought about running Flamethrower, it doesn't pack up enough, enough of a punch for me to be uh, Choice Scarfing. Next we have GLaDOS. GLaDOS is on the team 
um, because of, like I mentioned earlier, his coverage with alongside Electivire and Mega Swampert, uh, very good. I, I have him with a Lumberry because he doesn't need the extra strength of a of a Life Orb. Um, I don't want to choice him. I need him to be able to mix up moves, and I want him to be a Dragon Dance set so he can set up on his own. He can force out switches with um, with his Intimidates against people that don't pack something for him, and there's quite a few Pokemon that do that. He can set up against the likes of Alamomola, and even if he's going to opt to try and get a burn on me or a Paralyze with a, a T-Wave, uh, I'm going to take one of those just fine, and I can, I can continue. I'm not going to play willy-nilly with this Lumberry, though. I don't want to switch into Scalds on the risk that he gets it first turn. Um... I, yeah, I think I think the best move for GLaDOS is to play him safe, utilize that Intimidate as best I can, and try and find positive matchups for myself against uh, other members of his team. Um, of course, we're going to talk about Electivire now. Um, Electivire Viral, he's Jolly, Motor Drive, Life Orb. Um, I needed him to be Jolly, and with the exact speed investment that he has, because I needed him to outspeed... Um, Without max investment, I need him to outspeed Excadrill. Because um, against Excadrill, it's a dangerous matchup, and one that I might not even end up seeing, but I can outspeed him and one-hit KO him with Earthquake. You'll see his moveset here, Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, Earthquake, Quick Attack. A lot of people might be asking, why not Wild Charge? Viral is a very, a very serious potential team sweeper for me. And... Uh, Life Orb alongside Wild Charge is likely to end Viral Sweep in just a couple of attacks, and I can't have that happening. It, I need him to stick around longer than that, and on top of that, Thunder Punch, the times I would use Thunder Punch over Ice Punch or Earthquake, um, Wild Charge, one hit KOs, Thunder Punch, one hit KOs. So why would I bring Thunder Punch? Um, this is against almost everybody. The Pokemon that don't get one hit KO'd that are that I'm picking the Thunder Punch attack against uh, will get two hit KO'd by either. So there's no reason for me to bring Wild Charge over Thunder Punch. Thunder Punch nets me a couple of extra attacks, and um, it matches up. A big thing about Viral is that he's going to match up incredibly well against his walls. So I'm going to need to wall break them. I have Quick Attack here because I want some priority on my team. I opted not to bring Mega Scizor and it's going to help me against Mega Pinsir if I go up against him because Mega Pinsir can't one-hit KO me with a Quick Attack and I can maybe counteract him with a Quick Attack there and I didn't really need anything else in that slot. Could have packed a Power Up Punch, didn't see a circumstance where I would opt to do that with him though so I'd rather have the option with the Quick Attack there. Um, Scallopede is the last Pokemon I ended up bringing, but before I talk about him, I'm going to talk about Ditto and why Ditto was one of my considerations. Mega Pinsir is a monster in the GBA format. Mega Pinsir has a great move pool that matches up very well against my team. My team is pretty rock weak, but I don't mind because most of the Pokemon that are packing rock aren't packing its stab, and a lot of uh, have a Pokemon that can take most of those hits. So um, that's just one one example of what Mega Pinsir can carry. He can carry Earthquake. Um, the biggest concern I have about Mega Pinsir is if he tries to set up on me with Swords Dance. Because after a Swords Dance, or if he by some miracle gets two of them off, Mega Pinsir, uh, my team is done. Mega Pinsir wins. He's fast enough to outspeed all my guys unboosted, and his power is just phenomenal. The reason I'm not bringing Ditto, which would be my counter. If I brought in a Ditto on a Swords Danced Mega Pinsir, then I win the game. But I don't know he's going to go for the Swords Dance, and he's going to be a big threat even without it. And on top of that, Ditto isn't a guaranteed help against specific members of his team outside of trying to copy the Mega Pinsir, and it's risky to sacrifice a Pokemon just to get Ditto in safe, because I can't switch in against a Mega Pinsir with a Ditto and reliably hope to counter it that way, especially if he opts to switch out after. So it's it it's a risky move to bring Ditto in that circumstance just to copy Mega Pinsir. And another thing that's worth noting is that every single member of the team that I ended up bringing has an attack that can one-hit KO. 
Mega Pinsir. So as long as any of them can take one hit from him, and a lot of them can, without a boost under his wing, then Mega Pinsir will go down. So I just need to be 100% offensive as soon as I see the Mega Pinsir. I can't be switching, trying to wall it, trying to tank it. Um, I'm carrying on GLaDOS. GLaDOS is carrying Stone Edge, which will one-shot it. Moltres can one-shot it with either Air Slash or Fire Blast. Gudra can one-shot it with uh, Thunderbolt or Flamethrower. Which one do I have it listed as being good against Mega Pinsir? Um, actually, so here's a good point. Um, I can only do 92% with Flamethrower uh, with Gudra, not one-hit KO. I was considering HP Rock, I opted against it. Um, Mega Swampert is carrying Rock Slide. Scallopede, um, unfortunately, does not have an attack move that can take him out, but I can boot, I can set up against him, get a couple of boosts off, and then pass to, I imagine Gyarados would be my best bet once I get a couple of speed boosts up, but maybe Electivire. If um, Electivire could eat up one of his previously boosted... Um, yeah, maybe one of his, like, a quick attack or something like that. So that would be my best bet there. This is going to be a really bad matchup if he comes in on my Scallopede with Mega Pinsir. Um, it's very dangerous. Electivire uh, packs, of course, Thunder Punch, which will one-shot him. Ditto would have been a good matchup, too. So the, there's the there's the sort of thought process there. If Mega Pinsir comes in, I need to be hyper-offensive about it. If he's going to play it really well, it's going to be a problem for me. But it would have been a problem whether I brought Ditto or not. And I couldn't see myself letting any of these Pokemon go. Moltres is my surefire way to ensure that if he leads with Infernape, he's not getting rocks on the field. It's got Willow to neuter some of the Pokemon. It's a potential answer to uh, Mega Pinsir also, in the sense that I can... Willow it, really, really fast Willow, and I can eat up a quick attack. So that's my full team analysis, guys. You're now going to see me putting them into um, my battle box. These are the Pokemon I'm bringing today. These six go in the battle box. There we go, guys. Next video you see from me will be my battle against Hank the Pidgey. I hope you guys are excited. I hope you guys like this locker room team analysis. As always, my name is Gym Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.